This podcast is part of the Telerik Developer Network. Telerik, a progress company. Hello and welcome to Eat Sleep Code, the official Telerik podcast. I'm your host, Ed Charbonneau, and with me today is John Sognez. Hello. And today, we'll be talking about soft skills. So, John, can you start with a little background on your brand or company, Simple Programmer? The the whole brand, like the whole company, Simple Programmer, is is based around helping developers in kind of all areas of their life. Uh, it's it's something that uh, that I've kind of grown into and, and I've become real passionate about. So uh, so I've got uh, a blog at simpleprogrammer.com that uh, that uh, I put out a lot of kind of soft skills type of content for, for software developers. And then I've got uh, a YouTube channel that uh, where I produce videos like three videos a week that uh, are are videos that are a lot of them are like Q&A for um, different different topics that developers have uh, questions about. And then I do a few podcasts, uh, uh, Get Up and Code podcasts, uh, which is like a fitness and health podcast for developers, and then uh, Entre Programmers podcast, which is uh, like a entrepreneurial podcast for developers, and then a uh, the Simple Programmer podcast, which is basically uh, the questions that get get asked in some some interviews uh, that I do on my YouTube channel. When we're talking about soft skills. Um... If you haven't heard this term before, can you kind of sum that up for folks that may not have had any uh, experience with soft skills? Sure. So, so the way I define soft skills uh, might might be a little bit different than, than what some people think. I think probably uh, kind of the general term soft skills, a lot of people think about people skills. But soft skills are a little bit more than just people skills, right? So I define soft skills as anything that's a non-technical skill. So that uh, that definitely encompasses people skills, and that's probably the largest portion of soft skills. But it's also things like you know managing your career, like these, like thinking about how how can I advance in my career, where do I want to go. Uh, it's things like productivity. How can I be more productive? How can I use my time more efficiently? It's even things like fitness, like how do I stay in shape and, and healthy, and uh, all these type of skills, finance. Um, the mental aspect that, that you bring to to your profession and into what you do in your life. So um, I, it's really to, to me, soft skills is sort of like a, a, is everything that encompasses a philosophy for life. Like how do you live your life better? Yeah, so I think your your um, definition of soft skills may be a little more broad than what most people might consider soft skills. Uh, some people, you know, think more just job focused. Uh, but you're saying, you know, this is a holistic uh, life approach. Exactly. Because, you know, and I think that's that's one thing that I've I've come to learn, at, you know, doing a lot of coaching for, for developers and other professionals is just that uh, that everything is connected. Right. I, I take a very holistic approach and I find that in order to be a really good developer, uh, you know, you have to take you, you can't just improve your technical skills. You can't just even improve your people skills. Uh, in, in your career, there's all these other things that, that play into it. I mean, your health has a huge impact on how well you do at work and, and how focused your mind is. And, and your attitude, your mental attitude has a huge, huge focus on, on impacting how you do your job and, and how you interact with other people. So there's, you know, you kind of have to look at the all aspects of your life in order to really uh, be, be successful. And I think it's, it's kind of that, that whole thing, like the, the weakest link in the chain is, is, is what the, you know, is the, the strength of the chain. So, uh, you know, I, I really look at trying to strengthen those weak links. Yeah, I think people approach, um, you know, work-life balance sometimes from a point of view of, I have a work life and then there's an entire different version of me and everything else that goes along with it for uh, my home life. Right. And really you can't draw a clear separation between those two things. Yeah. I think I think your definition kind of supports that a little better, more realistic approach. Yeah, I think so. I think I, psychologists would probably call that dis, uh, you know, disintegration, where <laughs> you're 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 have different, you know, uh, different personality almost, you know, and and it's it's not really healthy because you, you your your life is 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 part of your work, right? I mean, especially the most passionate, successful people, they're they're part of what they enjoy, part of their life is their work. So there's not as clear of a separation. Not that you know you work all the time or you play all the time, but, but they're trying to separate them out, I think creates the, like you said, this artificial uh, thing. That's, that's not really the most healthy way to live, I think. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, so what are some things that we can do if uh, we want to get started, you know, improving our soft skills? So, um, so I think that the, the best place to start, I mean, obviously I, I wrote a book called soft skills. So, um, uh, so you can, you can check that out, but, um, but aside from, fr from the book and, and kind of the, the place that I start in the book anyway, is, is this idea of first starting out with some kind of a goal, like picturing for your career, at least like what, what do you actually want to do? I think a lot of people don't have any kind of clear picture and goal. And, and it's like being a boat that, you know, is just has its sail out and is going wherever the wind takes you. Um, and, the, and a lot of people are just drifting at sea uh, in, in their careers and their lives. They just don't have goals. They don't know where they're going. And, and they're, you know, they're washing up on some random island and wondering how they got there. So I think the place to start is really to, to think about having a clear goal and to figure out, okay, where do I want to be in the different areas of my life? What, what is the picture? Like if I could, if I could watch myself walking down the street, the person who I would like to be, what does that person look like? What do they talk like? Uh, you know, how do they dress? What, what kind of job do they have? What are they doing? Right. You know, just to, to imagine how you want to be. And then from there you can figure out how to get there. And I think that's, that's a good starting point is, uh, is a lot of people haven't even really gone through that exercise or thought about that at all. So you would, you would start from that futuristic approach. Um, is there any uh, advice maybe for uh, measuring where you are now so, to get there? Uh, let's see. So, so to measure where you are now, I think, um, I mean, once you, once you know what, what, what the goal is that you're trying to achieve, then, then you can go and look and see, you know, honestly rate yourself and say, where, where am I along these different lines? And I think you can draw different lines along, you know, probably where, where I've divided soft skills up, which is, you know, career. Am I there? Where, where do I want to be career wise? And where am I? Uh, you could look at uh, the, the whole branding or, or marketing yourself, like your personal brand or presence. Uh, you could call this notoriety or and, and, and where, where are you versus where you would like to be in your, in your field. Do you stand out? Uh, you could look at uh, the, uh, the productivity, you know, how, how much do I actually produce? Where do I want to uh, produce? Uh, you could look at uh, the fitness and finance and then, and then the mental side of it as well. So all of these kind of things that, uh, that, that you can rate yourself and say, you know, have a clear point of where you are and where do you want to be. Okay. So I've, say I've defined this goal of where I'd like to go. How do I get my toe in the water? What do I do to get started? Uh, so I think it, it, de it depends on, on where do you want to go, right? So I think for most developers, a lot of what, what a lot of developers would like to do is to improve their career. Um, I think, that, you know, the common thing that I hear from developers is I'd like to make more money. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to have more security, not be afraid of losing my job. Like I know I could get another job. Um, and I'd like to build some amount of something that I'm proud of, like a name for myself, uh, something like that, you know, a reputation uh, to be respected by my peers, to be respected in the industry. Um, and so, you know, one of the first places that I, that I look to, to help someone do that is, is building a brand, right? What is just like, you know, McDonald's has a brand, IBM, Burger King, Telerik has a brand, right? Um, everyone, every major company builds a brand. Uh, as a person, you need to build your own personal brand too, so that you're clearly uh, projecting what you represent, what your message is, and, and getting that message across to people so that they recognize you, they know who you are and what you stand for, and that's going to go a long way. So I think, you know, one, one of the most successful things in my career that I was able to do was to build a brand for myself and the Simple Programmer brand, and that's opened up a huge world of opportunities for me, not, you know, not just in the entrepreneurial aspects, but before then, you know, job opportunities and raises and, and all these things uh, came, came from that. Uh, but now it's, you know, it, it's, even, it's even more than that. But uh, I think a lot of developers don't realize how important it is to build up a brand, to, to have, uh, have something, their, their own personal brand. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of personal branding myself. Um, I find that it, it's very helpful to getting your career moving and, um, you know, getting people in touch with you and who you are uh, much, much easier than it would be if you were, you know, behind a desk programming nine to five and uh, not putting yourself out there. You're not going to be discovered by your future employer or future, you know, peers and friends that are out there. 
Um, so what, where can we get started uh, with this personal branding? Um, do we create a blog first? Maybe you know, grab a domain, put a website up. Uh, what What do we do? So, I mean, I usually recommend starting off with a blog. I think that it works well for developers because we're most of us are savvy enough to easily you know, set up a blog. That it's not it's not very hard. Um, if if you need help, um, I have a free course at simpleprogrammer.com. You can just sign up from there um, to to go through it. Uh, but but basically, uh, you know, the step is is starting off with coming up with a theme for your blog, which I don't mean like a WordPress theme. I mean like you know, what is your blog about? Um, a lot of people, you know, developers make the mistake of blogging about whatever. And and I think um, you know it's important to have a specialization to have some kind of you know focus. The more narrow it is, uh, the easier it is going to be to build a name and a reputation in in your particular niche. So um, so so I think that's really where you start. And then um, once you have that, you know the, the technology aspect of it today, you can throw up a WordPress site, you know, in in, in minutes and and have that running and you know purchase a domain uh, and then. Uh, and then, and then it's just a matter of consistency, right? It's, it's uh, if you're willing to, uh, to, to write blog posts, let's say every week, and you're willing to do that for, uh, for a year or two, you're going to see results. If you're going to commit to this for like a couple of weeks and write four blog posts, like most developers end up doing, and then your blog is dead, it's, it's not going to help you very much. But um, so, so I'd say, you know, to, to get started, really, it is simple. That's that's not hard. Uh, to have the resolve and commitment to keep going, that's the challenge, and and, uh, and so that's that's where um, you know it, it's worth taking some time. I think to to really think it through and think, okay, have a clear theme for this blog, and then this is a schedule that I'm going to commit to that I'm going to write on this blog. Yeah, I think you're hitting on something there with the schedule and the theme and uh, what you said about consistent blogging. Um, any good brand. Uh, take Apple especially for example uh, uses consistency uh, to uh, get themselves ahead of the curve or, or be noticed uh, that that consistency brings quality with it so if you're blogging and you, you don't blog on a regular basis uh, people might perceive that as a, a lack of quality or dedication to the product that you're putting in front of them um, so I, th I think I see it that way, you know, as a quality thing um, in consistency. Yeah, and, and, and it's by far, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, there's so many bloggers out there and, and, and this and that, and, you know, how am I going to stand out? And, you know, still, my answer is always be consistent because so few people are. Uh, I, I frequently give talks at, at conferences or code camps on how to market yourself as a software developer. And, and I talk about blogging, you know, as obviously as a way of, of marketing yourself. And one of the questions I always ask people in the room is I say, you know, and maybe there'll be a room of like 100 developers in there. And I'll say, okay, raise your hand if you have a blog. And maybe, you know, 50% or so of the room raise their hand and say, now keep it up if you've written a blog post in, in the last, you know, three months. And majority of the hands go down. And maybe there's like 10 hands up. And then I say, okay, now keep your hand up. If you've written a blog post in the last month, and maybe there's a few hands, and I say keep your hand up if you've written a blog post in the last week and you've written and you've done this for at least a year. So, you know, for have you been blogging once a week for a year? And sometimes there's one hand up, but mostly there's zero. And I and and that's my and I you know, and then that's my point is is look, out of this room of developers who are already in the top tiers because they went to a conference, right? Because if you're going to a conference or you're listening to a podcast or reading blogs, you're probably in the top 1% already. 1% of those actually write a blog post every week. So instantly, if you want to be in the top 0.01% you know, .01 of developers as far as like building a name for yourself, all you have to do is write a blog post once a week for a year and you'll be in that, in that very small margin um, and, and that that requires consistency. That's like the, the the main attribute that there's a lot of people that start the race, but not a lot of people that make it to the finish line. Yeah, I agree 100. percent And I'm gonna put one more idea in everybody's head to kind of convince them of this. If you were to go to an open source project and you were you were gonna download this thing and use it in your project, uh, what's the first thing that every developer does 
they look at the commit history yeah and they see <laughs> is this thing still being updated and if it hasn't been updated in like a year people are kind of like well i'm not sure if i want to use that um it's, it's a dead project exactly uh, you can think of the blog as the same thing if it's if you haven't posted in a year you kind of have a dead blog exactly yeah and and that's the thing is like right when you apply for a job right the first thing that I'm going to do is Google your name <laughs> and then hopefully your blog comes up first. And then I look at that and if I see, wow, you've been posting like every single week and you've got all these topics, you're, it's like all of a sudden against the other 10 people that I'm looking at their resumes and, and Googling their name, they don't even have a blog or their blog is like four years old and there's nothing on there. Uh, you, you just stood out way, way ahead. So, I mean, there's just a huge, huge uh, advantage to to doing this and so few people will be willing to do it that that you know it, it's no matter how much I say this like it'll still be a worthwhile like because because so few people will take this advice and actually do it yeah I think you pointed out something important there uh, employers will google you these days especially in the technical field that we are in as developers uh, that's going to be one of their first go-to things when uh, you put your resume in somewhere. Uh, they're going to go type your name in and they're going to be looking to see what those results are. Exactly. So having a blog is one thing. Um, are there any other things that can help um, You know, make sure that the top, say, five results on Google are something positive of you? So, um, so definitely, like you said, like having the blog, uh, there's a lot of other ways. So uh, your blog is kind of your home base, but then you can do these kind of other outreaches. Obviously, you know, you could, you could, should establish yourself on the social networks and have consistent branding there, you know, have a Twitter account, possibly a Facebook account or page, uh, Google Plus, uh, you know, LinkedIn for sure. And you want to, you know, have a, have a nice clean, uh, nice looking headshot that you use consistently for all of those uh, or, or a brand if you want, if you want to use a logo or something like that. Or a combination, um, and and make make everything j match up so that it's you have a clear message, you have a you know clear focus, uh, and 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 all those should lead back to your blog. Uh, so when someone googles you, you they'll they'll find those things. Uh, the other things that you can do, there's a lot of different channels. Um, one thing I always recommend for developers, like on how to market themselves and build their brand, is what are all the channels, the mediums that you consume, and those are the places where you could be. So, uh, you know, a lot of us read blogs, a lot of us listen to podcasts, or maybe we watch videos on YouTube, or maybe we read magazines or we buy books. Um, all of those things are places where you, you can reach out and, and, and contribute. Now, some of them are harder than, than others. Uh, you're not going to just, you know, come from nowhere and suddenly speak at a, a large developer conference. Right, uh, that 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 takes some time. You have to build a reputation, or you're probably not going to get asked to write a traditionally published book. But anyone can go reach out uh, to someone who's they're you know running a, a developer podcast, for example, and get get on the podcast and talk about a specific topic that's going to be interesting to developers. I think I've done probably somewhere around forty podcasts now uh, as guests on on different podcasts, uh, and and that that helps right to to spread your brand. Um, you can write for magazines. Not everyone can write for MSDN magazine, right, without a reputation. But there's a lot of other smaller developer publications that might not pay you to write an article, but they would love to have content. Um, same goes for publishing a book. You can publish your own book, um, and then um, there's uh, you can create YouTube videos. So YouTube is a huge, huge thing. I, I get a ton of traffic uh, from YouTube, and uh, and a lot of a lot of people who know me and know my brand, know me from, from YouTube videos that they've seen. So there's a huge amount of ways that you can, you can market yourself and, and build a really good personal brand. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit on that point to where you said, uh, go out and seek out people that will take, uh, an article. Uh, we actually do that at Telerik. Um, we have something called the Telerik developer network. And we will take article submissions and put them on developer.telerik.com. So if you are one of those people that's interested in doing that, uh, get in touch with us. Um, go to developer.telerik.com and uh, shoot us an email. Let us know you're interested. Yeah, that's a great opportunity. Um, and, 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 and so a lot of people probably think, oh, I never get published there. And, uh, but it, it, so many people probably will hear this and not do it. So, like, you know, if you're the person who does it, does it and you write a quality article, you probably have a pretty good chance of getting published, I would imagine. Yeah, 
Uh, definitely. If you have a blog that we can look back at just, you know, for reference even, yeah. um, and see what your writing history is like, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, the biggest blog or the most popular blog, just like, like you said earlier, the consistent blog, uh, where our editor can look and say, you know, oh, okay, he's written a couple articles about JavaScript. They're really good. We'd like to see more. And, um, we'll take, you know, what your submission is and, uh, run it through our editorial process, which is also a great uh, learning experience if you've never done that before. Um, editors may have this reputation of, you know, wanting to change your, you know, what you've written or something like that, but it's ag actually the exact opposite. They want to make uh, sure your your content is the best, yeah. and they'll give you excellent writing advice and feedback on what you've written, which is something you don't get when you do a blog by yourself true yeah for getting free education is always always great and plus you know just developing that writing skill is is such an awesome like a lot of developers don't understand how important of a skill learning to write is because learn to write and, and, and when you first start writing you start start a blog you probably will suck at it I sucked at it right at most people do but um, but when you if you keep doing it, you will get better. And as you get better at it, you get better at organizing your thoughts in general, which is just awesome as a developer. It's a, it's a very uh, crossover skill that, that will help you as a developer, especially working on teams, being able to communicate your thoughts. If you can write well, if you've been writing a blog or writing technical articles, uh, you're, you're going to have a huge, huge advantage in your career because your communication is going to come off better. You're going to understand how to organize thoughts and to put, put together logical arguments. And, and it's just, uh, it's one of those skills that, um, that is going to help you to really advance and grow in your career. Plus it's, it also gives you like a, a fallback thing that, you know, matter, no matter what profession you're in, writing skills are, are communication skills in general are, are paramount. Yeah. It's excellent advice because you can be the best programmer ever. You know what I mean? You could be this stellar programmer, but if you can't communicate uh, with your team, then, you know, people aren't going to be able to discover how awesome of a developer that you are. Exactly. Yep. So, uh, we, you know, we've talked about writing and blogging, a uh, little bit about social media. Uh, what other type of avenues can we take to improve our soft skills or our personal brand? So I think, you know, aside from one of the big ones, like I said, is kind of the career and in, in, in marketing yourself, which we talked about the, the branding. But one of the ones that as developers that I think is most impactful that a lot of developers lack is is the people skills, what generally people think of as soft skills. Uh, the best thing resource I would I would recommend for that is actually a book. It's an old book called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a book that I read at least once a year just because of how, how great uh, the advice is it's kind of it's life changing advice, but it goes over a lot of different topics about dealing with people and can kind of change your perspective. and And when you start practicing those type of things that that Dale talks about in that book, uh, it it has it can have a really huge impact on your life. Uh, a lot of developers don't realize how often we interact with people, right? I mean, we think, okay, well, my job is to write code. And, and my response is always, no, your job is actually to deal with people. That's what everyone's job is. Uh, when you get in in the morning and you go to work, what's the first thing that you do at work? You open up your email, right? <laughs> Most of us, at least, we check our email. And who sends you email, right? It's not computers, except for the build break failure you know, <laughs> email. It, it's, it's, it's people, right? So you're dealing with people. When you write code, right, uh, who are you writing code for? Are you writing it for the machine? I mean, yes, the machine has to interpret it, but you're writing it in English, and and what makes good code is that it's readable by people, not by the machine. The machine doesn't care what how that code is formatted, but people do. So you're kind of that's a communication skill, right? So you're technically writing code for people all day, most of our days for developers. We spend a lot of time in meetings, you know, in communicating with our teams. So we're dealing with people all the time, whether we're dealing with our coworkers, our bosses, other teams. So this is a very, very valuable skill. And once you can deal with people effectively, communicate your ideas, understand, empathize, and, and effectively influence people to, um, to, 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 to your ideas and your way of thinking, uh, it, it, it really opens up a lot of doors uh, for you in your career and, and in your life in general. 
Yeah, I think a lot of people in the world in general see developers as introverted. Mm. And uh, I think if we don't, uh, as developers, you know, kind of try to break that stereotype, uh, we're doing ourselves a big disservice. So you know, one thing that might help um, is finding other developers to, to talk to. Um, you know, go to meetup groups and, and go to conferences and don't don't be the guy that goes to the conference and then goes to lunch and right. finds the table that has no one sitting at it <laughs> and expect other people to just come sit around you. Find the biggest table that's maybe got one seat left and wedge yourself in there and see what everybody's talking about. Yeah, exactly. And, it you know, the thing is, like, you're going to feel uncomfortable, right? I mean, like, uh, you, you starting this podcast, you probably felt uncomfortable. You've never done a podcast before, right? Like, but it's, it's a good experience. Like you have to force yourself to do these things that make you feel uncomfortable. And then you become comfortable. The first time I turned on the video camera and started doing YouTube videos and talking to myself to a camera, I was like, it felt very uncomfortable. The first time I talked on stage, it felt very uncomfortable, uh, you know, and, uh, but, but it's, you grow from those experiences and then you, you, um, you, it, it really does, does change, change your life. And it opens up so many opportunities. It's funny. I, I'm I'm a real big fan of of, of Tony Robbins, and I, you know, in reading some of his books, he he even takes it like he suggests all kinds of outlandish things. He's like, uh, you know, uh, next time that you're 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 going outside, go and start skipping down the street instead of running. And and he's like, uh, you not only will you feel good because skipping is fun, but you'll give a lot of other people a nice laugh too, and they'll feel good. And I'm thinking. You know, if you have the ability to do those kind of things, they seem kind of crazy and outlandish. But if, if you're willing to put yourself out there, if you're not, you know, afraid to be to look like an idiot, uh, you really grow. And and uh, and you find that n not only do people not reject you, but you don't care if they do. And that's that's like such a freeing point when when you don't care if people reject you, when you can just be who you are. Man, the the whole world just opens up to you. I always think back to a little. You know, story my dad told me whenever I start a new kind of endeavor or project, uh, like the podcast, for example, um, he told me when he was little, his dad took him and all of his brothers to this lake to learn to swim. And mm -hmm. it was pretty much, you know, dad picking every kid up and throwing them in the lake and just <laughs> saying, here, you're going to swim, learn to swim. So whenever I pick up a new project, uh, it's like, okay, I'm just going to throw myself in here and learn how to swim. Yeah. You know, what? It's usually it's not something life or death uh, like swimming, maybe, but, um, you know, for a podcast or for, you know, maybe public speaking, uh, sometimes you just got to throw yourself in and hope for the best and, and learn from any mistakes that you make. Yeah. Sometimes I like to think of it, too, is, is this whole idea of, you know, when you start a thing and the first time, maybe the first time you record a podcast episode or you go on stage, give a talk or something you, you you think, man, that I suck. This sucks. You know, write a blog post. This is horrible. Uh, but but if you can think, how will this be if I do this a hundred times? You know, like if you just put that thought in your head, if like you got to do it one one time before you can do it a hundred. But after a hundred times, how will I be? Will I improve? Like when you think about it on that long scale of time. Uh, sometimes it helps to think of it as someone else to think because sometimes we think, oh, yeah, I can never do this or I'm going to just feel uncomfortable. But if, if you thought, think about someone else's life, think about someone else going up on stage and, you know, the, just a, for the first time and giving a talk and, and totally bombing it. But then think about if they did it 99 more times. Do you think that they would improve? And, and, and then you kind of bring it back to yourself and realize, hey. If I do that, I'm going to improve. I'm, there's no way, you know, I'm going to feel uncomfortable right now. But when I've done it 99 more times, I'm not. So, you know, I have to get through these uncomfortable points to get to that point of expertise. But unless I'm, you know, unless there's something mechanically wrong with my brain, I'm going to advance and learn skills and start to become comfortable and habituate to things just like everyone else in the world does. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I've talked to some people about is... Uh, they, they get nervous in front of large crowds. And uh, what I usually tell them is, you know, I, if I'm speaking in front of two people and I disappoint one person, then I've disappointed 50% of the crowd. Right. If I have 250 people and I disappoint two people, then eh, what's the big deal? So exactly. the more people, the better. I like bigger crowds. So maybe there's some comfort in that for other people as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's true. Uh, the other thing that comes to my mind and on that subject is, um, is uh, you know, the uh, like Army Rangers, 
they they make them jump out of planes, right? <laughs> they got to do their, and it's like, uh, I'm sure, you know, jumping out of a plane is, is pretty scary the first time, but they make them do it so many times that it's not a big deal. You know, after you've done it, air jumped like a hundred times, you, you don't care. And, and that's, um, it's the same thing. Like if you go on stage, you just got to think of it that way. It's like, Hey, I'm going to do this a bunch of times. And, and then it's, it's, it's going to be, it'll eventually become no big deal. Yeah, it's just like writing cro- so. code. I mean, practice makes you better if you're not writing code yeah. and you're just, you know, reading what other people have done and not experiencing it for yourself, then you're not going to improve the way, um, you would if you're practicing it on a daily basis. True. Well, yeah. John, um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and I know you had a coupon code uh, for a simple programmer that you wanted to hand out. Sure, yeah. So um, so if anyone listening is interested in finding out more about uh, marketing themselves as a software developer, um, I have actually built a course called How to Market Yourself as a Software Developer, uh, and it's about, it's like four, four uh, e-books and then uh, two two video courses in there on a bunch of different topics about building a personal brand and building a blog and and how to get the name out there and, and, and build your reputation. Um, you can find that at devcareerboost.com. That's D-E-V careerboost.com. And then uh, with the code, if uh, if someone is listening to this podcast and they want to sign up, if they use Eat Sleep Code uh, as, as the code, they'll get $100 off. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so devcareerboost.com and then eat sleep code. Well, John, I really appreciate doing the show and, uh, appreciate all the great advice that you're giving people. Um, please stop by simpleprogrammer.com and we will put show notes up at developer.telerik.com. Uh, John, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a blast. I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back with TJ Vantol from the Telerik Developer Relations Team. Welcome back. I'm here with TJ Vantol. Hi, TJ. Hey, Ed. Now, TJ, John Sanmez and I were just talking about uh, soft skills and building a personal brand. And one of the things that we covered was uh, getting in front of people and uh, giving sessions and, and learning how to do speaking engagements. So I thought I'd have you uh, come on the show and talk a little bit about the Summer of Native Script, which is a program that we're running at Telerik. And uh, before we get too deep, uh, give us a little bit of info about yourself, TJ. Yeah, sure. So as you said, my name is TJ, TJ Van Toll. I'm actually from Michigan, Lansing, Michigan. I work for Telerik on the DevRel team, Developer Relations. And I work really primarily on Native Script. And if you're not familiar with NativeScript, if this is kind of the first time you're hearing it, sort of the easiest way to explain it is NativeScript is a framework that we, Telerik, uh, released for free and open source earlier this year. And it's a framework that lets you build native mobile apps using JavaScript. So think native iOS apps, native Android apps. So basically the idea is that you can leverage JavaScript and and or TypeScript skills that you already have um, in in order to reach um, iOS and Android. And we're doing uh, what's called the Summer of Native Script, and that's something that uh, you can get involved with and kind of do your own meetup. Is that right? Yeah. So as I said, Native Script is is something we released earlier this year, and one of the things we're trying to do is just get the word out about it. And so that's really where this Summer of Native Script program came out of. And really, what the Summer of Native Script is is we're providing a bunch of materials for to help really anyone run a meetup or a user group uh, meetings about native script. So if you go to the website, it's nativescript.org slash summer of native script, all one word. Uh, what you'll find there is that we have three meetups worth of content. And by content, I mean, we have slide decks. So just sort of prepackaged, pre-made slide decks that you can sort of customize to make your own. We have videos of us presenting those slides. If you sort of want to watch that first to see how we present those slides before you go do it live at your meetup or group. And then also some hands-on labs. So if you're the type of person that wants to get your hands dirty or have people that attend your meetup actually dive in and try some coding, we have labs as well. And as I said, we have three meetups worth of content. So if you want to just run a basic, introduce some people to NativeScript, we have just a basic welcome to NativeScript session that you can use. 
or if you really want to dive a little bit deeper, uh, we have three sessions. So you can do the welcome session, you can go beyond the basics, and then we have an advanced session as well. And all of these things have the slide decks, uh, the videos of us presenting those slides, as well as the labs. So what's nice about this is uh, if you haven't done uh, a speaking session before, or you want to get in, you know, into the community and establish establish yourself as a speaker, uh, you can go get the materials for Summer of NativeScript and uh, either host your own meetup or reach out to another uh, meetup group and uh, ask if you can uh, host a Summer of me uh, NativeScript uh, meetup. And you don't have to go and invest yourself in creating a presentation and materials and uh, uh, creating labs and examples and things like that. Yeah, if you know a group in your area, um, absolutely, this is a great time to just contact them and say that you're interested in doing this. And you could also uh, just head to a place like meetup.com and search to see if there's any groups in your area, or even just start a brand new meetup. If you've been meaning to sort of get your name out there to start talking about mobile, to start talking about some of these technologies. And one of the things that we're actually doing is part of the Summer of Native Script is if you go to that, that URL, uh, or if you just Google Summer of Native Script, at the bottom of the page, we have a form. And if you let us know about your meetup and just give us your email address um, and a mailing address, we'll actually send you out some Native Script stickers, some super cool little blue Native Script stickers, and also a Native Script t-shirt. So we'll, we'll ask you for your t-shirt size as well. So you, so you can be prepared to run your meetup in style. Uh, so TJ, we have uh, the Summer of Native Script and uh, the materials that go with that. Um, and then we also have something else that we do called presentations in a box. Uh, so this is a little bit of a smaller commitment if you just want to grab a talk offline to take to your meetup group and uh, uh, do a presentation without investing a bunch of time and creating something uh, unique and you know of your own. We have presentations in a box for a lot of our Telerik products. Uh, isn't native script one of those? It is, yeah. And I'm, I'm just looking at the list now. There's there's also Kendo UI, App Builder, UI for ASP.NET uh, Ajax, and Telerik backend services as well. And you can grab those at developer.telerik.com uh, and select community from the menu. We'll put a, some show notes together with uh, links to native script and summer of native script and those presentations in a box but these are all things that you can uh, get for free and go out and uh, start speaking and uh, getting your your name out there as a speaker and uh, that can help people get moving on their personal branding absolutely thanks for closing out the show with me tj i think summer of native script gives people a great resource to uh, go grab and get involved with speaking and uh, being part of the community so thanks for coming on the show and sharing that with us. All right, thanks.